wanted to give you a close up of, of the palette, how I set it up. Uh, it's a little bit backwards for a lot of people that are right handed. They, they do the, uh, the darker colors over to here. I don't know why I started setting it up that way, but the key is to put out the same palette every time, what you're used to in a warm and, and cool of the primary colors. I've expanded over the years uh, to, to this. And uh, let me put this back here so you can see that I also, when I'm inside painting, uh, I paint on, on a piece of glass. And so this is, this is my setup here. And those are the colors that I used. I put them out. Um, and if we're interested in a, the question and answer session, I can give you the names of those, um, uh, of those colors. Uh, but you can see that I work quite large. Uh, this, this painting to my, to my right it is a uh, four by six foot painting, and that's done inside. But what I wanted to do today was primarily talk about how I pre-mix these colors and use a, 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 an approach that's a little bit different. And eight years ago, I wrote an article for the artist magazine called, called Parent Colors. And this is something I, I just sort of stumbled on over the years at workshops where I, I watched instructors take, take a, a palette from a beginner and mix groups of, of colors together that didn't quite work and make, made one mass color. And those mass colors were altered to create variations on, on a theme, perhaps the sky color or a mountain or the grass, where they have slight variations, warm and cold, lighter and darker. So rather than trying to recreate the wheel every darn time, why not just create separate mass colors, which I call parent colors. And it's a combination of the hue, the color, and the value of the color. By pre-mixing those to start with, it's a, it's a form of, of observation and it slows down the painting process so you can carefully look <clears throat> and make some of the decisions about painting before you, your brush hits, hits the canvas. So, okay, let's move back to this. Anyway, I don't know if you can still get this. This was the July, August 2014 issue in brushing up on, on this, the artist magazine. So the idea here today is to show you that there are times that, that working out that starting your, your painting from, from an iPhone is actually a good idea and a good head start, especially if it's a time sensitive situation. And I visited this particular alleyway. You can see that's, that's one time frame, and this is another. So sometimes when it's a really important time, and I, I think I decided to do it when it was about seven, in, p.m. in the evening and so I use a grid you see that's just a printout from my from my own printer and I print it out and put a grid on it and it's evenly separated so it's square so that makes it even easier so that's that's an 8 by 8 and I'm painting on on a panel that is divided equally and that is a 12 by 12 so this has been done since the beginning of time it's a very simple way to, to put the painting down. So let's, let me show you this. This is, this is about all the, you can see this is spring loaded. So I'm gonna put this in here. This is a spring loaded and, I, and this is how I would actually start that painting. But you can see that I've mixed all these, these pre-mixed colors. I have a light, light sketch on here. The only thing that I haven't mixed on here is the sky color. So I've, I've pre-mixed the other ones to start with because we're, we're limited on time today. But what I do is give these, these pre-mixed parent colors a name. It seems to make sense for me. That might be the, the warm brick and light. This could be the fire escape green, uh, the yellow brick and light. This is the, this, the street shadow. It's a brick street, so it's a dark red. And this is the, uh, the very darkest dark that, that has a lot of the shadow area. And that, 
And the idea here is to use big shapes with big brushes because you can, you can fill those in very easily and simplify, simplify, simplify. Can't stress that enough. When you're outside painting, think of big shapes to little shapes and simplify when you can. So here's a, I'm gonna take some color here and just start and mix with a sky. It's taking cobalt blue, cerulean blue, a, some white, and just a tad of gamelan gray, which I, uh, it's, a, it's the, it's the Portland gray, I'm sorry, that's the name of it. And it comes in light, dark, and medium. That's a good cheater because, especially in Pittsburgh, we get a lot of gray, <laughs> a lot of gray skies. And so I, I've started to use this uh, to modify a color. And the, the thing that I try to impress upon students is that when you're making a parent color, you have to make a lot of it because if you don't make enough, it's almost impossible to get the, the original uh, parent color exactly the same again. So mix more than you think you'll need because this is gonna be the, let's, let's imagine a starter batch that we're gonna, we're gonna derive colors from. So I wanna make enough of this to really start. You know, this sky's a pretty big sh shape here. So I wanna, let's, let's make even more here. You know. And also, when you're making these pre-mixed colors, you want the value to be a, a bit on the dark side because we work from dark to light. So this is the, uh, okay, I'm gonna lighten it just, just a bit. So you can use anything up here to make your, make your pre-mixed color. I suggest you try to achieve your first parent color without the use of white. White really does deaden the intensity of a color, so try to try to get your first color. Now, of course, you can't get around to using it sometimes, perhaps in the sky. It's a light value. But you can always lighten it later. So try to keep your colors as rich and as, uh, as you can right from the beginning. Okay. Um, and if you start running out of anything in particular, Recharge that, and I put my paint out in worms. It's better than a, just a dollop, kind of a puddle, because that gets contaminated really fast. So try to keep in mind that put it into a worm that you can take it off at the end. Okay, so that's a sky color. I'm gonna add just a, a tad. I'm just gonna show you that I can add a little bit of yellow and white to that and alter that. Isn't that neat? So that's a variation on a theme. I personally imagine this being uh, a DNA that runs through this. Now we can add just anything else to it. There are three, look at these nice variations. This one, I added just a little bit of cad orange and titanium white to the mix because the sky, if you look at it, transitions from more of an ultramarine blue, darker to a lighter at the horizon. So I have those pre-mixed there, and you can see how quickly that was done, all from, from my parent color. So you can see those are the parent colors, and each of these can be derived from, from those. So it's a nice way to start a painting because what you do is you're, you're looking at the painting and imagining it in your mind's eye of how to simplify these shapes. And rather than trying to paint every bit of detail, Think of shapes, not, not a window, but think about the, the, the shape of the window or the color of the window. So, some windows like this shape here that I'm gonna do has, has a sky reflecting in it, only darker. So, the, so think about the shape that we're painting. Don't think that you're painting a window. So we're almost ready to start blocking in. Uh, one thing I do before I block in is clean my palette. And so keep your palette clean. As they say in the cooking business, clean as, clean as you cook. Uh, 